Hello and welcome to the Human Talk Podcast, the podcast where humans talk. This is an interview-style podcast where I ask our guests questions about anything and everything. I am your host, Jacob Walker, and today I am joined by Jonathan Ellis and Jackson Champagne. How's it going, you guys? What's up? We're good. We're here. Yeah, I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. What did you guys do last night? Last night? Last night was a story, to say the least. Okay, so have you um, ever seen a, a ring doorbell clip? I have seen a ring doorbell clip, yeah. Okay, okay. So you're aware that ring doorbells can record anything that happens in front of a front door? Yes. They are always <laughs> recording. Yes, they are always <laughs> recording. They like, you can ring the doorbell and then the video will start going, yeah. You don't even have to ring it. Technically, you can just move quite rapidly in front yeah. of it and it'll oh, start recording. Okay, yeah, so like a bat okay, flies past. So, uh... So basically, you know, we, we wanted to um, do a, a fun prank on our friend without, like, making them mad. So we thought we'd lightly sticky note their car, lightly, so that they lightly. check the ring doorbell. And then, oh boy, <laughs> they are in, they are uh, ready for the performance of a lifetime. So basically, here, we, uh, what we did is we, we staged a fight in front of the ring doorbell, okay? So basically, we walked up to the ring doorbell and we we're like, "Yo, Jackson, like, oh, get off of me, fam!" And then, and then we clap, and then right into patty cake, we go bam, 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 bam. Turn around, send it back, and yeah. And then after that, we had a full course meal in front of someone's door. Yeah, we. I think it was pretty good. That was our our second act. Was about a waiter and a couple, um, who were then in a fight because of the cute waiter yeah so i don't know if that was exactly the uh, story you're looking for for a podcast but that's that the a, one we want. that was a perfect story all the visuals will translate perfectly into this audio podcast I'm gonna do the <laughs> thumbnail for this podcast <laughs> yeah you guys just doing patty cake is the thumbnail for the podcast now did you uh did you start the podcast because of covid like was it like you were looking for an outlet of something to do actually no i've had the idea for a podcast for like two years I've been wanting to make a podcast for a couple years and COVID was just the perfect time to start it up because everyone was online now. So I had an easy access to people to talk. That's amazing. So you kind of just capitalized on like this yeah. weird situation that we've been in for the past. It's I definitely wish I would have capitalized on it sooner, but I'm mm -hmm. glad that I did capitalize on it nonetheless. Does, does you, okay. You have a podcast. So you're the person, perfect person to ask this, but does listening to your voice and hating it ever go away? No. Uh, no. There's a whole, I made a, I have a whole like scientific thing. I looked it up as to why you hate the sound of your own voice. But listening to a podcast over and over again as I'm editing it, I just hate myself more and more and more. It's just constant downward spiral. Basically, the reason you hate your voice so much is because it do, you think you know what your voice sounds like, but you don't know what it sounds like at all. When you're speaking, the vibrations from your vocal cords are leaving your mouth and they're going to somebody else's ears. And that's what they hear. But what you hear is your vocal cords coming out of your mouth and wrapping back around to your ears, but also the sounds from your vocal cords going through your head to your ears. So your voice always sounds deeper to yourself than it does to other people because there's more noise. That's so true. Is that why my grandma thinks I'm my sister when she calls me? <laughs> yes, all the time. Hi. My grandma thinks I'm my mom all the time. Exactly that. I used to sound exactly like my sister as well. Yeah. That's like how, you know, they say people don't like themselves in photos because we, we always see ourselves in the mirror, mm -hmm. which is like flipped from how we see ourselves in a photo. Right. When I look at myself in the mirror, like I see my face from like that perspective, like all oh, my hair is part of the left mm -hmm. or whatever. But in a photo, it's like it's part of the right. And it's just like that's not what see... I look like. Yeah, you never truly right see yourself in like action, right? You never see yourself like how other people see you because we're always seeing a reflection. Right. And it's never like movement. Like people see you moving around and you just see yourself in a mirror standing there being like, oh, that me. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, bro. We've been, uh, compiling an edit for our epic ski tricks and snowboarding adventures okay now i need to know what the youtube channel is going to be called that you're gonna put this on i i reckon it's gonna be probably instagram or tiktok yeah uh, 
It's yeah. not going to be high enough quality for YouTube. Well, it could be, honestly. Like, because we've been, like, basically, we wanted to, right, we kind of wanted to have a bright side of this year. And right. at the beginning, we're going to take a clip every single day. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we tried to do the one-second video every day. And I mean, it lasted three days for me. Like, I just lost motivation instantly. But then we were like, what if we just, because we have, like, a group of friends, what if we were like, what if we just took, like, second videos whenever we were hanging out, whenever we were doing something fun or, like, adventurous? Right. So, so now and i think the end of the year edit's gonna be like super cool and it's gonna be nostalgic and we're gonna that be does to sound look. really cool and it's like a great way to bring a positive aspect to the to this year like that's yeah. awesome yeah like i really hope that like in 20 years i don't look back at the covid year and be like man that year was just but no i, I want to like look back and like you know you always see the positive in life mm -hmm. and it, it makes it a lot better when you have like videos like there's so many nights that i like enjoyed but if i just don't have any like photos like that's just gone that's not in my memory right because yeah. there's so much We've... stuff that you're constantly having to remember yeah i do think that's a, definitely a positive of like i know a lot of people are against just like having the phone constantly in your pocket but i mean like the picture and video aspect i think is amazing how like you're able to catch like memories where like as they're forming i think that's pretty cool right and it's also that very candid thing because people always remember stuff and they're like yeah and it was this perfect time everything was happy and joyous and then you see a picture and it's not like that at all so to have that candid aspect of photos too is awesome yeah that's not facts. where do you guys think when you put your suitcase in the airport and it gets on the conveyor belt and it goes behind the wall where does it go it goes to like every single suitcase goes to that one scene in toy story 2 like, they all <laughs> go into that scene, and then they play out the scene, and then they leave. Don't you think that that has put us in a state of complacence? We just think it's that. But what is it actually? Yeah, it's that's not, true. It can't, right? So nobody... This nobody feels like a conspiracy theory. Where does your suitcase actually go? Suitcase go, bro. It has to go through security, right? It know. does. And it goes through a it goes through a metal detector. So I think think if you have a camera in there they'll probably figure it out and turn it off because you know the back rooms of the airport is a secret <laughs> it's a secret you say <laughs> it's a secret how do i know this secret uh, that should be our next breaking into the dia airport Jeez, <laughs> committing mass felony <laughs> how many felonies can i commit in 24 hours jacob um what's your favorite felony that is a perfect question. I love that question. My favorite Dang felony cow. is defrauding, defacing currency. <gasps> defacing currency? Oh my, Jacob, you're my favorite. There was, okay, here's a, you want to hear a story? Yesterday, yesterday at work, I was paid with like cash and one of the pennies was cut out and had a cross in the middle of the penny. It was so cool and I tried to keep it and I was like, I showed my boss. No, I, who'd I show? I showed somebody, and they took the penny out of my hand and just walked away. What, they stole it from me? Yeah, like, I was like, dude, check out this penny, and I, like, held it out, like, palm, palm up, and they just took the penny. They're like, wow, this is so cool, and then they pocketed it. Damn, Jacob, you gotta stand up for yourself, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna go to that customer and be like, I want my penny back. After that one. Okay, Jacob. This is this is real talk here, and I I need your your honest opinion, okay? This right. is dear and dear and near to my heart, okay? I don't I don't I don't play with this, okay? Do you think we should get rid of the penny? Not unless we round up taxes. If we round up taxes to be five cents, or round down taxes to be five cents, then we need to keep the penny. That was the most Jacob answer I've ever heard. What, wait, explain this. Okay, so like when you're paying with cash, you'll bring like $25 for an item that's $23. And the total, yeah. because of tax, will be $25.01. Yeah. yeah. So unless we can get rid of that, that little tiny, like the extra three, one to four cents for tax, we need to keep the penny for people that are paying with cash. Hmm. That's co yeah, that's fair. But how honestly, how hard would how hard would that be? Because I know addressing like consumer consumer products and services to match like a tax program where it always is in like a five cent range wouldn't be that hard. But to like completely re route like the tax system, 
like how hard would that actual like math be right would it just have to be in the like five cent range uh for our government it'd take three decades jackson we didn't go to the moon because it was fun we went to the moon because it was hard okay we never no went we went to the moon to one-up the russians yes we were because like hey it's we're cooler than you <laughs> <laughs> no nah, but jacob i'm i'm big big anti-penny i think it's the dumbest thing ever why i think it's a, a disgrace to abraham lincoln to put his face on a worthless piece of zinc isn't he on the five no he's on the penny no but he's also on the five i think both yeah he's on a bill and a coin Oh my god, people really are worried about getting rid of the penny, bro. Okay, well, I think, okay, uh, uh, well, one of the big arguments that I think can be easily, like, debunked is the tradition argument. Because I think that the amount of stuff right now that we would own if we were following tradition would be, like, terrible for our country. So yeah, I think, like, by keeping something that's not only putting us in debt, but also, like, causing, like, mass inconvenience. Jacob... I'm going to ask you a question. You, you know what else was a tradition? Half you... cents. We used to have half cents. So tradition uh, is not needed. 60 years, and when we got rid of it, nobody was like, oh my god, but it's like a tradition. I love half pennies. Oh. Do you know who was on the half penny? Because I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. I think it was... was it no. It might have been. That, that'd be pretty decent. They'll bring back but... the half penny just because of the uh, success of Hamilton the Musical. <laughs> like Miranda yeah 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 no but when we got rid of the half penny it had more buying power than a nickel so that's terrible so if that's the case like, this the is a penny. this is a totally <laughs> hypothetical question jonathan if we continue to get rid of coins will we eventually get rid of money currency altogether like paper currency like if we get rid of the penny soon people will be wanting to get rid of the five cents and then people will be running to get rid of the ten cents yeah. I mean, in, in my perfect world, all we have is a 50 cent coin and a 10 cent coin. I think that's that's my perfect world. I, I was thinking more but like 25 10. 20, but then 25 you have 10. Oh, shoot, you're right. Oh. This whole <laughs> yeah. time I'm first, too. So but, in, that, in your perfect world, Jonathan, how much higher or lower would taxes have to be to make everything round up? And how different and, would all prices have to be? In 10 cent increments. So what, the taxes right now is 0.7 or 0. I mean, if Arizona iced tea can really charge me $2 for a can now, like, we can raise taxes by 10 cents. 2.10. Wait, they raised their prices? Okay, I was at uh, a gas station and bought an Arizona iced tea. Like the big can, the tall cans. It was like the plastic ones, so maybe that's okay, why. Okay, that's why. Like the big cans, they have like their whole shtick is that they will never change that price. For real? That's I think that's I think that's what it is. Terrible business idea. It's a horrible business idea, but the moment people the moment they change it, people will riot. Coke used to Coke was sold for a nickel for like sixty years. Like through the Great Depression, through all these changes of economic booms and economic downs they were just five cents because they made a terrible deal with like the bottling company or whatever and they're like this is a dumb idea bottling soda we'll just sell it for i don't know five cents and they didn't send like an end date so they were just stuck selling their bottle for five cents that is for like funny and then even when the contract ended they couldn't just be like now nah, we're selling it for a dollar because then people would hate that it costs american taxpayers 60 million dollars a year to pay the expense of making pennies because pennies cost something like 2.3 cents to make one cent. So we're losing $60 million a year. And then because you can't use pennies, you right? You can't use them in vending machines. Any of the places that you'd think you'd use coins, so like vending machines, parking meters, they don't accept pennies because they're useless. And if you're ever in a line at a grocery store and the person in front of you starts using pennies, like, all respect for that person is gone. Like, I hate people who use pennies. So, like, fiddling with pennies and wasting that time. Have you ever heard of uh, opportunity cost? Opportunity cost of using pennies is something like a billion dollars. Wow. So, every year, the American taxpayers 
pay $60 million for the opportunity to lose a billion dollars. That's a good deal. That's a steal right there. <laughs> Jacob, you listen to country music? No. Oh. I do not. What about you, John? Do you listen to country music? Ready? I I feel stupid about this, but I got into country music because I played Red Dead Redemption 2. That's fair. That's fair. That game had a great soundtrack. Right? That I game soundtrack like, is awesome. So long, and there's a lot of missions where you don't do anything, but just like being on your horse and a cowboy... And I just I grinded through that game. So I have a fast. I have a problem with that game, and GTA Five, which is Rockstar is trying to do too much with their games. Like they tried to make an open world game with a story, but having that open world and then having you have to traverse through the entire open world to get to one point in the story mission, which takes longer oh. than the actual mission itself, that oh. doesn't flow with me. I don't like that. Yeah. That's right. so true. In, like, GTA, I wouldn't play GTA if there wasn't a story. Like, I get tired of open world and, like, right. an hour. But that's, yeah. the, that's the problem okay. with GTA. You can only do the story so much. And when you do the story, you have to go through the entire open world to get to the story. So you're already tired yeah. of the open world by the time you're done with the story. Yeah, bro. Like, check the map and there'll be, like, a marker and you're like, well, I guess I'm going to have to trek across the entire map to get there. And then it's like a follow mission where you like you just walk. Where more. you walk back. You know what's really weird to me? And it's something that I don't think I'll ever get over once I learned it. What? Most of the people you hear on a laugh track are dead. Laugh tracks were recorded in like the forties or fifties. Really? Yeah, like, like the at the like at the beginning of television. Let me look this up real quick, because I don't want to be wrong here. That's a little scary. It's a little creepy. Are you a fan of laugh tracks? No, I no. hate laugh tracks. What about you? You know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and not, like, argue in favor of laugh tracks. Uh -huh. But I think the fact that Friends is the most, like, one of the most popular TV shows of all times Dude. is a testament to how effective a laugh track can be. Like, that show is legit not funny if you watch it without a laugh track. I don't want to be told when to laugh. That's the problem. I laugh tracks tell you when to laugh. Laugh with the laugh track. But I'm not oh. laughing with it. I'm being told to laugh by it. If I show you a Friends episode right now, you, you're you not going to just be like, like, they, they're not going to say a joke and then you're just going to be like silent and be like, this is not funny. I don't you're going to laugh with them. No, I think no after, I'm not. After watching Kimmy Schmidt, after even watching like some SNL, like, laugh track is used because the writers aren't good enough. Yes. They're it laughs on their own so they have to throw in something where like oh you should you could laugh now that's why i've never been able to sit through an episode of friends or big bang theory this big bang theory oh yeah they big bang laugh. theory has a laugh track but they have a laugh track without jokes it's just like who ate all the pizza <laughs> <laughs> and then when like the like celebrity cameo comes in woo yeah woo <laughs> Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that is objectively not funny, right? Who ate all the pizza? But then you put in a laugh track and, and some... That's still not some, funny, though. Like, uh, I just think I'll, it's... I'll I think give it's it a cringe. Pet, petty laugh. Pity? Pet you're, going for, if, you're, if you're giving it a pity <laughs> laugh, it's failed at its job. Yeah. I know, but it made something that wasn't funny slightly funny. Yeah, and I think even by talking about this, it's Which like, is impressive, because it's literally just audio. No, I maybe it's because we're sheep. It's like how if someone sees maybe it's because you're a sheep. I hate laugh tracks. That's exactly no. That's exactly what it is. Their goal is to just overshadow, the, uh, overshadow like their lack of like creative, realistic writing by just throwing in like oh, these people thought it was funny, but they're not even there. But they're not even there because laugh tracks were recorded in the fifties. I don't. I don't. I okay. I. I don't want to be one of those guys that's like, oh, I hate Friends, watch The Office. But, like, I think that, like, shows that even came before that were funnier, like Seinfeld. Or, like, I Love Lucy. Yeah, exactly. Does so I Love I just Lucy think... have a laugh track? I don't remember. Like, I don't know. I... If it does have a laugh track, that's one of the only exceptions for TV shows that are, like, genuinely pretty funny that have a laugh track. But I think I started off really, really strong with, like, Parks and Rec. Thing. Parks and Rec is a good show. That was a good show. And after, and I'm like thinking back on it, I don't think it's the best. No. But I do 
that the characters are solid, the jokes are solid, the chemistry is solid, and I'm like, that's like a really, that's like a really great baseline show to think about. Yeah. Then like yeah. I like Community. Yes, loved that's community. what I was gonna say. Community is my probably favorite sitcom. Yeah. Just because there's no laugh track and the jokes are earned. When they make a yeah. joke, they set it up and they can set it up in previous episodes and then they make the joke. Yeah, it's amazing. I watched this video online about community and about how, you know, they were like one of the first shows that eliminated what you call like the middleman. It's so like in the office it's Jim. In Parks and Rec it's um Ben. Yeah. It's like it's like the guy it's like the guy that, that is normal. reacts to the jokes, yeah. you know? But community tried that for the first two seasons, but then they went completely off reel by making the main character guy like kind of kooky too. So the entire cast of characters has major, major flaws that bounce off each other. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think it makes a way better chemistry. Right. Because, you know, they don't have a character in there just to react. So what are, what other shows do you like, Jacob? Um, I mean... I'm a fan of Star Wars. I know people kind of hate on it sometimes. I like Star Wars. The what? The Christmas Star Wars episode. I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's the only thing in Star Wars. Oh, I guess the main. But, like, Star Wars isn't a show. Is it? Yes, it is. The Clone Wars is a show. Rebels is a show. Well, then why didn't you say that? Clone Wars oh. is epic. Clone Wars is great. So good. And Not I think Star it's Wars because... Yet. And Star Wars Rebels is also great, and not because it's a Star Wars, but because character development. The shows that I enjoy have great character development. Like, in Community, they start yeah. as a bunch of buttholes, and they end up being, like, really close friends. Yeah, I'm a fan of that, yeah. 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 I what think are... Clone Wars was the first thing I ever watched on Netflix. It was on Netflix for a while? Yeah. I didn't even realize that. It still is. No, it's on no, Disney Plus now. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that. You know what show I think has really great character development? Like, I'm going to name three shows because they all have really good character development. Okay. Go on. Breaking Bad, the first oh. couple of seasons of Lost, and Game of Thrones. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Game of Thrones is so long. It would be crazy if it didn't have character That's development. That's true. That's true. Jacob, what are your favorite movies? Favorite movies? Uh, Depends on the genre. Like, I enjoy Star Wars as a movie. Mm -hmm. um, okay, besides big franchise. Uh, a Quiet Place was really good. I really enjoyed A Quiet Place. Yeah. I just think the concept of having a really small cast and a really bi uh, like decent-sized budget movie and having like five or six lines of dialogue in the whole movie is really cool. Yeah. Did you see the uh, second one? Has it come out? Yeah. I have not seen the second one, no. Okay. I should, though. I didn't know it came out. Um, Maybe. I thought it did. Tenant was really cool. Oh, my God, right? The concept for Tenant was really cool. Yeah, we watched we watched Tenant together. It is. It's like, it's so good, you don't really need to understand what's happening for you to enjoy the action. Right has ever shot a movie like that before yeah it took me two watches to understand the like temporal pincer yeah when i first when the movie first explained that i was like okay i understand the concept but i have no idea what just happened i think temporal. most christopher nolan movies are really good did yeah. he make inception he did yeah. make inception yeah dark knight, right? dark, oh, yeah. knight dark knight rises <laughs> batman begins yeah also, a magician movie? I don't remember. Okay, so there were two magician movies that came out the same year. The Prodigy, right? I don't remember if the if the Prodigy or the Prestige. I don't know which one is Nolan. I I've seen both. I think I haven't heard of these. Prestige has the massive twist, so I assume that's Christopher Nolan. Yeah. <laughs> Jackson has a weird love for the movie Rock Dog. I know. I've always wanted to talk about this on a four more people will see. All it. right. Well, we're all listening, Jackson. What's Rock Dog about? Okay, Rock Dog is about a dog finding and help. Finding him. Rock Dog is about a dog finding himself, okay? Now, people may ask, why can't all the animals just be humans? Because they drive cars and do human things. And here's the answer they're cuter. So, 
Right. Rock Dog. Rock Dog. Rock Dog is he's in a mountain town. He his dad wants him to be a protector of the village. He wants to be a musician. So a radio falls out of a plane. (laughs) And that's the only way he can listen to music. But he learns his guitar. Right. Because in his village, right, music really isn't allowed because I guess because it's it's dangerous. It's footloose for animals. Shut up. It's not. (laughs) <laughs> it's not footloose for animals it's it's a masterpiece that is undermined by the like six out of ten animation but right so there's these really funny characters there's these two wolves they're sheep and they're really funny but really your focus is on Bodhi, who is a mountain dog who learns to play the guitar with his mentor angus scattergood who is a cat and angus scattergood right he's run out of inspiration Angus Scattergood. And he has a, an anger Scattergood. He he really needs some new music because his record label keeps on calling him on the phone and saying, yo, bro, where's the new song at? But then after Bodie the dog gets hit by a garbage truck, he, he learns the song, right? And it's called Glorious. And it's like... By Macklemore. And it's honestly really catchy. <laughs> I really like this the soundtrack of the movie. But, right, so he hears it out his window because his window is open and Bodhi's playing it on the street, right? And there's also this dynamic of, like, there's this little robot who ran out of... <laughs> what, what robot? Who guilted Where Angus. This, this, the there ro- sounds like there's so many plot lines in this movie. <laughs> yeah, because it's awesome. It's it's. I give it, it's almost, you know, it's, it's tenant level, tenant level, uh, stop. Really? Stop yeah. Yeah. How many temporal uh, pincers are in rock dog? Okay. Uh, it's, it is a temporal pincer in and of itself. And it's, you know, it's, but loose it's animals. shut up. It's the fifth Christopher Nolan movie. There's a great twist where Angus Scattergood doesn't give Bodie the credit for his song. So when <gasps> Bodie goes to rock and roll park with his other animal friend, he, he's like, Hey, I helped Angus Scattergood, who's like really famous, make this song. But then, and then the song comes on the radio, right? And then Angus Scattergood was like, boo, uh, I'm not going to give this kid credit, even though that it's his song. So then Bodhi gets really sad. So he runs away. But because he left the village on top of the mountain, the wolves are going there because, right, they want, they want the sheep, right? But since, but he's the protector of the village. But then he finds his power. Because he plays the guitar really fast, and blue beams come out, and he's able to defeat the wolves and play on a big stage. And um, I really like Angus Scattergood's accent. If I can get one person to watch Rock Dog, I've complete. And this isn't a joke. Like I actually like. I actually really like the movie. This is this is not a joke. Unlike uh, Jonathan's support of anti Penny stuff. Oh my god. No, Johnny loves pennies, bro. Yeah, he Stop. loves pennies. Uh, Speaking of, I know, now that we're talking about pennies, John, you should talk about how much you love the penny. Yeah, oh, like no. Abraham Lincoln's your favorite president, I, right? I don't like this bit. <laughs> Stop this. This is being... <laughs> Alright. Uh, you know what kid movie I really like? What? Uh, is it Storks? Oh, I haven't with, seen that movie. It's with uh, Angus Sandberg hmm. and uh, Keelan Peele. They're the wolves. And oh, the wolf pack just are really good. They landed at me, had me balling. Do you know what movie was really good with Andy Samberg this year? Which one was it? Palm Springs. Palm Springs? Palm Springs was really good. I really enjoyed that movie. Is it a comedy? It yeah, it's a comedy. It's like Groundhog's Day, but uh, like, uh, it's yeah, it's like oh, Groundhog's oh Day, my, but with I Andy. Oh yeah, my god! I really like oh. that movie. That was a good movie. Talk yeah, it time. was. What's it about? So it's... basically. You you go ahead, John. No, no. You got this one, Jacob Funny Man Walker. All right, I'll take this one. The plot of Palm Springs is basically Andy Sa- uh, Andy Samberg and the girl from the one Star Trek-themed episode of Black Mirror are at a wedding. Oh, my God. That is her. It is her. Wow. Sorry. Weird connection that I just made in my brain. Continue. And uh, so they're at a wedding. And Andy Samberg goes and he, like, tries to talk to the to the girl and they, like, end up hitting it off pretty well. And so she follows yeah. him out into the middle of the desert where he gets shot in the shoulder with an arrow and then the day resets. And it wakes up from her perspective 
No, no, no. So he gets shot by an arrow, and then he she goes and finds like a weird mystical portal, and she walks into the portal and she wakes up uh at the start of the day. Like so the day just reset. And she like panics and she's like, What happened? Where am I? And Andy Sandberg has also been stuck, and so he has to explain to her that this is like a loop or whatever. So and, Andy Bear Sandberg was already in the loop. Yes, he's already been in the loop for like a like a long time. So the girl reached that day and now she's in the loop as well. Yeah, she no no, she reached the portal, walked into the portal, and now she's in the loop as well. Oh, okay. So in the beginning it's a classic like love story during a loop they go and they have fun during the day um and then eventually we meet a new character played by jk simmons and he goes and he tries to uh kill andy samberg a lot like Why? because he accidentally got him into the portal as well so jk simmons has <laughs> also been stuck in the loop and so yes. eventually uh andy samberg and the girl like have a heart to heart and andy samberg tells her like the truth about stuff and she gets mad because she's like, you used me or whatever. And she she disappears from the movie. And then it's just Andy Samberg being really sad for like 20 minutes. And then it, like, she comes back and it turns out she had studied, like, physics and, like, astrophysics to figure out how to escape the loop. Oh, so, like, during the time where she could, has, like, unlimited time, she studied. Oh. Yes, she studied, she studied everything to figure out how to get out of the loop. That's like, have you ever, uh, have you seen the thing where it's like, they calculate how long they think, uh, who was in Groundhog's Day? Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Yeah. How Bill Murray was actually in the loop, but judging by how many skills he learned. So it's like, learn Chinese one year. And then it just like <laughs> ranks up all these things he's learned how to do. And he actually spent like an eternity. In yeah. He's, he was there for like a hundred plus years. Yeah. So that, what would you do? Honestly. What would be your time frame? Because we've seen enough movies where we know what would be happening. Like, day one, panic. It'd be all panic. Yeah. I think I'd just try and, like, do everything. Yeah, if there are no consequences to my actions at all, ever. Maybe skydiving. It's yeah. a weird experience. Like, imagine if they made a movie like, like that, except it was, like, an outside force making it happen to just see what a person would do you know what i mean Ooh. like re doing stuff without consequences because right i mean you get 24 hours so i mean just anywhere you can get in 24 hours i, I mean an experiment the... kind of like that has happened before vsauce did the train the trolley problem but in real life really they did yes it's on youtube it's free to watch what? he did the trolley problem in real life they made people think they were going to kill people. They did make people think they were going to kill people. But at the end of the test, there was a what? big, a bunch of black screens that came up and that just said, everyone is okay. Everything is fine. And there was like psychologists that came in to make sure everybody was okay. Oh that, there's God. no way that's legal now because the Stanford prison experiment, that was like right on the brink of like what they were allowed to do. Right. Yeah. And then like, well, after that, they're not allowed now to do like human experiments that harm people. Right. And I oh. think I he he did it like there's there's a video on it there's people that did it there were like five or ten test subjects that went in there they unknowingly went in there but they signed a contract and then everybody was like they were told they were okay and they got their thoughts afterwards and everything what what, what did they choose um i don't remember what the majority chose but i think a lot of people chose not to do anything because then they felt i think okay don't quote me on any of this. Go watch the video for yourself. It'll be in the description of this podcast. People chose not to flip the switch because they felt less guilty when they did nothing. So, like, if they if they flip the switch, their direct action would have an effect on somebody else. But their indirect action would be less pushing on them, like, than actually doing a direct action. Dang, that's so true. Like, if they decide to switch, it's like they are killing those people. Yeah. Whereas if they don't do anything, it's like, it's the train. Like, but if I, they don't do anything right, they'd be killing more people. Right. But... I, you guys not switch? Oh, wait, explain the problem. Okay, There's like so trolley problem. Really uh, wrong. A trolley is headed down a train tracks. And there is... Uh, th the people cannot get off the tracks... They, there's nothing anybody on the tracks can do. It is solely up to the person changing the tracks decision. 
on one track, the track that the trolley is headed for, there are five people on the track. On the trolley that the people, uh, on the trolley that the button could be hit, there's one person on the track. If you yourself had the ability to flip the switch and make it so that it went on the one track instead of the five, would you do it? Which I feel like by not doing it, you are you are killing those. You are killing four more people than you have to. And I think like even in a dire situation like that, you have to you have to make the decision to turn the turn the lever. It's mm. it's four it's that's four more families just like distraught. Right. I think, like, psych- psychologically, we can talk about it all day. We can talk about it for as long as we can. We can ha- argue about it. But in reality, it comes down to flight, fight, or freeze. Yeah. It is a breakneck reaction that you have to make in the nick of time within a life-or-death situation. I have no idea what I'd do. I can't imagine. I, don't yeah, know, yeah. I cannot tell you what I would do because I don't know. Exactly. You want to know a real-life example of that, though? So they're making like automated cars now, like with Tesla. Yeah. And part of that is they have to program into the car how to crash in bad situations. So like if they're boxed in and they have to turn to the left or the right, they have to make decisions on what right car to crash into for right. the safety. So like if we're talking net safety of people, so less people are harmed, you know, you want to crash into people who like are wearing helmets. Like right. if it's a bike. You want to crash into someone who's wearing a helmet, but and then I, that encourages people from wearing helmets. Right. So it's like, it's crazy to think they have to program into the car, like how to crash. I think so they with, also programmed in a bunch of like safety ratings for cars. I could be wrong here, but oh, I think oh, if they haven't, they definitely should where they program in the safety ratings for cars. Oh my God. I was just about to say that. Yeah. Like, wouldn't you would rather probably crash into like a Tacoma, like pickup truck rather than like a minivan. Right. Right. But if that minivan has better safety ratings, like it's got more airbags and stuff than the Tacoma, should the car drive into the minivan yeah. as to hope that the stuff will work properly? Yeah, but then there's probably more people in a minivan. Right. And you're more people, but there might be like less injury. Do you like... know what I think a good example of the trolley problem is that people can do all the time? What? Shopping carts. Do you put like, your shopping cart away in the in the shopping cart folder? The shopping cart theory? theory? Yeah, shopping cart theory. Who doesn't do it? People don't. People don't. Really? All the time. Dude, people don't. Okay, Jacob, I work at a grocery store. I okay. did. Okay. Okay. It people gives don't. no. It gives me the most in fear. I like. There's like little things, right? The pet peeves that just make you so mad for no reason. And one of them is people just thinking they're so much better. Then, like, the people who have to get the cart, they just leave them. Just leave them in the middle of the street. Like, instead, and it'll be, like, two parking spaces what? away from, like, the place they're supposed to be. But they just say no. Now, I, I, I do think there are a few reasons why you should. Maybe it's, like, just incredibly cold, right? There was that a few times when people would leave, and I was kind of like, oh, okay, that's fine. There was one time when there was, like, a really elderly lady or, like, a mom with, like, a bunch of kids. And I'm like, you know what? That's chill. But when a person just parks in the middle runs in and like running shoes runs back out leaves their car right there and drives away i'm like it's just not only the audacity but just like it's that's just complete disregard for and you never go grocery yeah. shopping like in a hurry you're never like i got a lot of things to do but i'm gonna get groceries right or now. when you do go grocery shopping in a hurry you don't get a big cart yeah that's it's I, terrible i've seen that like the shopping cart theory but i've always just assumed like Everybody just no. There are a lot of people who don't put their shopping carts away. I think one fifteenth, one tenth, put For their real? shopping carts away. Yeah, I give two percent of people. I I think it's higher than that. There's a there's more. It's probably like three tenths. There's a decent amount of good people in the world. I do. I think that there are a decent amount. Of oh, people not people. not one fifteenth of people put them away. One fifteenth. Oh, of people, okay. Yeah, like two percent of people do not. Okay. Yeah. Because most people are, are, like, most people, like, they, like, go a long way to put their car back. And I'm like, you know what? Respect for that. You know what I mean? Because you really don't. You don't have to. Yeah. Like, there are pe- there are people's job to put your car back. But it's just, like, with the opportunity to make it more convenient for another person, you're, like, choosing, do I want to? It's almost like choosing to harm somebody or not. Right. And that's why it's a great example of the trolley problem. 
that's total that's totally true yeah i think it's, it's not an example of the trolley problem it's just an example of like how uh like if you're a good person or like uh it's the quote. action it's the action versus inaction thing true true action but i feel like the thing with the trolley problem is they're both bad options yeah yeah that's why it's hard because you either have to do nothing and more people get die in the end or choose to kill one person hey there was a slight corruption issue with the audio right here the outro didn't get recorded clearly enough so i had to re-record the outro which is why it sounds really rushed and there's no communication between me and the guests thank you so much john and jackson for coming on i had a great time if you enjoyed remember to come back next week for more human talk